So I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again. This season of My Hero Academia has done an amazing job at not only making the main characters you want to see have those epic, amazing fight scenes, maybe emotional, but also give the side supporting cast their time to shine and flex their capabilities. And I think a lot of characters who have abilities that you would brush aside as not being that important in a big life or death, maybe even world changing mission, but leave it to this episode, man. Like, without a doubt, Twice and Hawks' fight is what stole the show. But it's not like whenever we weren't focusing on them, the episode was boring. Like, every character got a moment to really flex what they're capable of. And I love the fact that instead of like baiting the viewers in, saying, here's hundreds and hundreds of heroes of all shapes and sizes and power levels and not actually using them all to their full potential, you're actually seeing a battle where even if it's not something that lasts more than a few seconds for certain characters, you're seeing the overall teamwork of fan favorites, characters that may have just recently been introduced, or characters we've seen for seasons but really have never put up a fight because they've never been needed because we have our main characters, we have our pro heroes, and that's what makes this season so damn good, but first things first, Hawks versus Twice. This is a betrayal that, uh, it really stings, and it's an interesting sting, right? Because here you have Twice, who this is the second time now, he's basically, because of his carelessness, has basically put his friends in danger, and for him, that's two times too many. There's no way that they would ever forgive him, and even if they would, it seems like he's not making it to ever realize that. I really feel like they're building up to twice his death, and if he survives, I'd be shocked because, I mean, he came in this episode and stabbed someone in the back like eight or nine times, and there's a shot in this episode where you see the the blood and everything, and I'm like, he they're actually killing twice, which is something I didn't really think about going into this episode. Like, quickly they established this would be the fight, right? And it was pretty clear even before this episode, Hawks has very much been manipulating twice, meaning that this fight was inevitable. But at the same time, I wasn't expecting it to go as hard as it did, because for Hawks, he 100% was serious of, like, he wanted to help the guy. He realized he was actually a pretty decent guy overall, who got roped into a situation that basically exploited his kindness and turned it into vengeance and he really did want to save him and saying like don't move you'll get cut apart and to see from twice's point of view about how this is you know you're a liar you're a fake you're just a horrible person and we can never trust these heroes like they casually have the dobby moment where you know his name gets dropped and he's like how the hell would he know that name which is a mystery in of itself which it's going to be fun to probably explore this season, but at the same time, the fact that you can have like those big bombshells that just shake a character to its core and it's just the small fry of an episode, that's how you know like Bones isn't holding back this season. It really does feel like probably some of the most refined My Hero content that we've seen in a couple of seasons. Not only is the content itself fan favorites in the West, but it most importantly feels like it's getting the attention and time to shine rather than being crammed into like a 12 episode core in a two seasons where you know they have to do an arc that's kind of a little more padding it's not as exciting instead it just feels like season six can go all out and just let this arc shine because there's no breaks on the villain train the thing that was really fun though about the fight is that the best parts weren't even attacks but more so what the characters were saying and those are always some of my favorite fights where you know the emotion the dialogue that's taking place and to see the way characters would just not give up, whether it was my boy Hawks who basically is going up against the worst possible opponent at one point because burning feathers, I mean, how the hell are you supposed to attack against that? You'll just get turned to ash. But to see how, you know, the idea of like heroes are always good at saving people even in life or death moments. So in this case, being able to capture twice and retreat at different points. It was just nice to see how this episode felt like a combination of everything that these characters have been through and the fact that such a fake story for Twice became so real to him, and the fact that it's, if this was the first time it happened, it wouldn't be as much of a, I have to go on the suicide mission, more so he would be like he was before. But the fact that this is the second time, he has nowhere left to go back to, and even if they say it's okay, there's no way you could convince someone who really had his head on his shoulders better than a lot of characters recently, but the ability to split himself apart has really made his mind snap in ways that I don't think you can really mend back together. And to just see the escalation and the brutality, like, it wasn't even that there was, like, a lot of blood. You definitely saw the characters got wore down more, whether through cuts, whether through basically just exhaustion. 
And yes, characters did get stabbed, and we did see that pile of blood, which most likely was Twice's dead body, is what I'm thinking. But all things considered, the thing that really stung was just how it was a conflicting feeling because you knew Twice needed to be defeated. You knew the League of Villains needed to be defeated, but in, when you put yourself in Twice's shoes, that really does seem like the ultimate act of sabotage. And the way characters like Dobby could pop up saying, like, don't listen to a hero, they're always the one in the wrong. Don't worry about it, you were just manipulated by bad people. And it's like, you see all these conflicting emotions, and that's what made a fight like this so great. I think often in shows like these, you know, People hype up because, oh man, you know, look at the saga, look at this crazy animation, don't get me wrong. Last week had a bunch of that, but the fact that each fight is actually at its core, the reason it's interesting, is that the situations the characters are a part of, the ramifications if they don't defeat said character, but most importantly, the way emotion can really be supercharged, as in the case of Hawks vs. Twice. And really, the fact that characters are all getting their time to shine, whether it's a field of mushrooms sinking people into the ground, the idea of like piercing a dozen people at once to just basically knock them all down. It's nice to see that everyone's kind of getting their time to shine, and like I mentioned at the start of this video, the fact that when you see a hundred characters in a single shot, you're like, oh, that'd be really cool to see a, a story actually utilize more than a dozen within a small little fight, and that's kind of what they've been doing. Yes, each character doesn't get a Hawks level fight, but of course it wouldn't. We'd be needing thousands of chapters, and eventually that would grow boring. But what you can do is you can have all the different characters large and small in terms of where they rank hero status wise, and you can let them work together in a collective way to overwhelm a very powerful evil organization. And that's exactly what they did, and they did so with grace. I really think this season of My Hero Academia has the potential to be one of the best seasons we've seen in this show, and it all depends on if the pacing, the momentum, and the emotion can keep up. And what we've seen so far over three episodes is everything is indicating it can do that. We haven't even reached the crazy points that people have been waiting for for years to see animated. So the fact that, all things considered, more or less set up, because this really is set up in the grand scheme of where we know this type of art can go, it really does paint a very positive, if not bloody, future. And I think the fact that we're already starting to get a taste of that bloody future, I mean, they basically establish, should they lose, hero society's gonna crumble. Like, there feels like there's no way to come back from that. And if it is, like, that's an entire arc, if not more's worth of content to even regroup. So the fact that they're not pulling their punches, and even though different characters don't have as much of a bad experience as maybe a character like Hawks has had, or even our best girl last week, in terms of arms twisted and snapped in the way they did, it still feels like everyone's going to experience the bloodshed of this battle just at different stages, and I love the fact that it just feels like the My Hero Academia we've come to know and love, but with all the experience and heartaches that we've kind of shown over the past however many seasons, right? But thoughts and feelings and ideas on what you want to see going forward in next week's episode. The episode title does have me quite hyped to say the least, but uh, thoughts and feelings, leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new around here. Until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.